How do antioxidants protect against free radicals? To answer this question, one needs to understand what are antioxidants, what are free radicals, and then also understand their effects on the body. A molecule is said to be stable when there are paired electrons on the outer orbit. In a free radical, the outer orbit contains unpaired electrons. There are various types of free radicals out of which the reactive oxygen and nitrogen species have a great impact on the human body. The reactive oxygen species are produced during reduction oxidation or redox reactions occurring mainly in the cell in the mitochondria and respiratory burst or oxidative burst that occurs in the phagocytic cells such as the neutrophils and the macrophages. Reactive nitrogen species are nitric oxide and its derivatives and as these substances also contain unstable oxygen molecules, they can also be grouped under reactive oxygen species. So these are the two main types of free radicals in our body which are reactive oxygen and nitrogen species. Some non-free radicals such as hydrogen peroxide and singlet oxygen are also considered as reactive oxygen species because they are extremely reactive and can damage the cells so they are also termed as reactive oxygen species. Free radicals are highly reactive. Reactive in chemical terms means the property of an atom, molecule or radical to have a chemical reaction with another atom, molecule or radical. And this property of being reactive is highly present in free radicals that is they are highly reactive free radicals have very short half-life half-life is the time taken by a substance to reduce to half of its initial concentration and the free radicals have very short half-life they quickly reduce to half of their initial concentration and they generate new radicals by chain reaction. This can be explained using this cartoon depiction here. You can see this red molecule which is a free radical. Free radicals as you know have unpaired electrons in their outer orbit. So here you see the electrons in the outer orbit, which are these small round structures. There are two electrons here. This can be considered as one pair and the other two can be considered as the other pair. And here there is one single electron without a pair. It's an unpaired electron and that's a free radical. And this free radical, in order to make itself stable, will take an electron from its nearby molecule, which could be stable. So by taking the electron by its nearby molecule, it now tries to become stable, whereas the nearby molecule, say it has been a stable molecule with paired electrons, now it becomes an unstable free radical. So you can see there is a pad electron here and another pad electron and there was another pad electron but that has been taken by the free radical next to it making it a free radical now. And now this frad, uh, sorry, this free radical will now take an electron from its nearby molecule, making that a free radical. And this continues as a chain reaction 
damaging nearby molecules. And they cause damage to biomolecules, cells and tissues by means of chain reaction and by direct effects on various parts of the cells. For example, here you see a normal oxygen atom and when it loses an electron, it becomes a free radical and then it sets off a chain reaction damaging the cellular substances such as the membrane of the cell which is made of lipids and proteins and carbohydrates and also it can damage the DNA of the nucleus and the mitochondrial DNA. And we know that DNA is an essential substance for protein synthesis and when that is damaged there is decreased protein synthesis and impaired cellular physiological performance because the cell membrane is eroded, the structures are damaged, there is a distortion, there is no normal physiology within the cells. So the performance of the cell is impaired leading to various destructive reactions and also there is decreased resistance of the cell to environmental stress because it is the cell is not stable now it's eroded it's damaged because of the effect of the free radicals leading to various other biological effects and we know that our body is made of multiple cells cells joined to form tissues tissues joined to form organs and due to free radical damage various cells in our body are affected thereby affecting the organs and this can be manifested in the heart as heart disease fibrosis hypertension ischemia myocardial infarction all these can occur due to the free radical damage and in the skin again the cells are damaged leading to various other manifestations like psoriasis dermatitis and so on and in the kidney various effects such as chronic kidney disease and so on and in the joints there can be rheumatoid arthritis and various other manifestations and in the lung there can be asthma, COPD and various other manifestations because the cells in the lung are damaged and the cells in the brain can be damaged leading to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and various other manifestations such as autism, ADHD and so on and the cells in the immune system can be damaged leading to chronic inflammatory reactions, autoimmune disorders and so on and the blood vessels can be damaged leading to various other manifestations such as hypertension, atherosclerosis and so on and also multi-organ damage leading to diabetes aging reactions and so on and also the eyes can be affected due by macular degeneration retinal regeneration etc and various other manifestations that can occur within the body because the cells in the body are affected by the stress caused by free radicals and essentially almost all the organs can be affected by chronic stress by free radicals so that's the reason this has to be tackled and managed and to manage this we need antioxidants. Our body naturally produces antioxidants. Apart from that, due to various environmental factors that are affecting our body, sometimes we may need external sources of antioxidants or we'll have to increase our consumption of normal antioxidants in food in order to compensate for the free radical damage. Previously, you learned that reactive oxygen species are produced within our body by means of normal metabolic reactions such as the free radicals which are produced within the mitochondria of the cell during the redox reactions occurring within them and also the free radicals that occur or are produced within the phagocytes such as the neutrophils 
or the macrophages of the cell. These are the cellular sources of reactive oxygen species. Apart from that, our body is also exposed to reactive oxygen species from external environmental factors such as UV light, ionizing radiation, smoking, pollution, and all these various other factors can induce the production of free radicals and can also expose the body to environmental free radicals. By definition, antioxidants are substances that protect the cells from the damage caused by unstable molecules known as reactive oxygen species or oxygen-derived free radicals. The term antioxidants can be broken down into two word parts which are anti meaning against and oxidants meaning substances that cause oxidation. Antioxidants, as the term implies, help against oxidation. Oxidation is the process that can lead to the production of certain substances known as reactive oxygen species or free radicals. Antioxidants help against the free radicals either by preventing the production or stabilizing the free radicals. Free radicals and antioxidants can be essentially considered as the superheroes and supervillains of the cells of our body. That is, the free radicals act like the supervillains affecting the cells of our body, whereas the antioxidants are the superheroes that protect us against the effects caused by the free radicals. Antioxidants stabilize free radicals and thus help terminate free radical reactions. They do this by electron donation. As you know, free radicals have unpaired electron in their outer orbit. So here the circled electron here was the electron that was present by itself in the free radical. So this has been stabilized by means of donation of an electron from an antioxidant. The antioxidant has donated its electron to the free radical and now it has become paired, making it stable and thus eliminating the free radical. It's not a free radical anymore because it doesn't have an unpaired electron in its outer orbit. And what's unique about antioxidants is that though they donate an electron to the free radical, they do not become free radicals themselves. They do not become reactive free radicals. They do not act like free radicals. They don't become highly reactive. They don't damage the nearby molecules. That's what's unique and good about it. So that way, the antioxidants help stabilize the free radicals and prevent the damage caused by free radicals. Antioxidants can also help repair the damage that are already sustained by the cells. And as antioxidants help eliminate free radicals, they can also be considered as the scavengers of free radicals. The sources of antioxidants can be exogenous. Exogenous meaning it is obtained from outside the body through food and supplements. And endogenous means it is produced from within the body and this could be enzymatic or non-enzymatic kind of antioxidants. Examples of endogenous antioxidants are enzymes like catalase, superoxide, dismutase and non-enzymatic sources of antioxidants are uric acid, ubiquinone and so on. 
When you go through the list of antioxidants and their dietary sources, you get an idea that most antioxidants, almost all the antioxidants can be obtained from food sources. You don't really need supplementation for antioxidants, but in some cases it might be necessary, but not most of the time, no. You can meet the antioxidant needs of the body just by consuming a well-balanced diet that is rich in vegetables, fruits, berries, and consider taking green tea once a day, and all that dietary habits and uh, taking um, just sufficient amount of meat, not too much, just sufficient. All that itself can meet the antioxidant needs and help us eliminate the body of free radicals and their damaging effects. For example, the antioxidant vitamin E is present in vegetable oils like sunflower oil, etc. And you can use that for cooking. And it is also present in whole grains, leafy vegetables, nuts, and also vitamin C, as you know, is present in citrus fruits like lemon, orange, and also present in berries and so on. And you have beta carotene that's present in carrots, spinach, and many other sources of antioxidants. And there are many other types of antioxidants like lycopene, lutein, selenium, alpha lipoic acid that can all be obtained from various food sources. Note that some antioxidants like coenzyme Q10 are also present in meat and Especially this coenzyme Q10 is present abundantly in the heart and chicken. And also there are other sources of antioxidants present in various food sources. From all this, all that you need to understand is that proper dietary consumption of a well-balanced diet containing fruits, vegetables and a required amount of meat can meet your needs of antioxidants of the free radicals and thus help prevent various diseases and for proper intake of antioxidants you don't always need supplementation just planning a well balanced diet that is rich in vegetables fruits and the proper amount of meat and also in taking black tea or green tea once a day that is a good source of antioxidants can itself meet the dietary necessity for antioxidants and most of the time supplementation will not be necessary but if needed you may have to consider that thanks for watching this video if you found it helpful please like comment and leave your feedback share it with your friends Subscribe to support the channel and if you have any questions that would like me to cover any further topics, please let me know in the comments below. Until then, happy learning.